it's just interesting when I realized that like there's so much pressure around women not loving themselves and not accepting their hair texture and like why are you wearing a wig why are you wearing a weave why are you hiding yourself like be who you really are take care of yourself take care of your natural hair but babe you also haven't grown out your hair since you are four your hair has literally been maintained short your whole life and if you don't have a lineup you start to get anxious that's rooted in the same uh, avoidance as someone who doesn't want to show their natural hair and then I feel like, you know, a solution to this is waves because waves and wave culture is a desire to want a looser hair texture so that it can look, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it don't make no sense. Does it really have to? There is nothing I can say. Hi, welcome to Mayowa's world. Hi y'all, welcome to Mayowa's world. My name is Mayowa and today we are going to be talking about texturism. I had a realization the other day that a lot of black men keep their hair short to avoid texturism. So let's talk about it. So my name is Mayowa and on my channel I talk about colorism, featurism, and texturism. Today's topic is going to be around texturism. So for those who are new, texturism is the discrimination of kinky hair types. So for this video today, I am actually doing a collaboration with Belissa and today we are giving a free toy giveaway. And if you sign up with the link in my bio, you will either be given a free vibrator or a gift card for a free vibrator. Belissa is a woman led sexual wellness platform and the goal is for everybody to be able to explore and embrace their own bodies. I was fortunate enough to be sent three toys, so I'm gonna give you all my reviews. Okay y'all, so this is the Pebble. So the Pebble doesn't have a pattern mode, which is actually really great. Um, the vibration just increases. And this is a really nice suction and vibration toy. The suction and vibration is controlled independently. Look at this like light pink. I love a good pink, y'all. So the second one is the Air Vibe, and this one actually has dual stimulation. Also, y'all, waterproof, rechargeable. This one's actually my favorite. We go together. And also y'all make sure you charge, like when y'all get sent this, make sure you charge it before you use it because yeah. And last but not least is the thump. I love this case. I feel like it looks like it could be like a glasses case. And this one does all three. It vibrates, it suctions, and it thumps, hence, you know, the name. So the thump actually utilizes Belessa's improved Pleasure Jet technology and it's designed to be the replacement for all of the external vibes. So yes, please sign up with the link in my bio to be able to win one of these really fun toys. Because just look at this, like this is just so freaking cute. You can just go anywhere and everyone's gonna be like, what is this? And nobody will know. So for this video, we're gonna be talking about the Travis Kelsey fade. We're gonna be talking about wave culture and how waves is rooted in texturism. And we're gonna be talking about how black men's texturism often affects black women. And I just realized that men liking the really sharp fade look is equivalent to women liking the excessive baby hairs. Like it's the same thing. And both are gender performances. Men keeping their hair short as an expectation, like a gendered expectation, is something that's new because a lot of African indigenous communities will have long hair and long hair being a part of a culture that you can see within men and within women. It wasn't gendered as it is today because now we can accept that, you know, when we think of femininity, people like to think of long hair and when we think of masculinity, people like to think of short hair. So I would say I think a fade is a safe hair option for black men. And when I say a safe hair option, I mean, this is the hair that a lot of people in the workforce will consider clean and well-kept. Fades come from African-American culture. Like that one is uniquely African-American. But interesting, you know, a, like if you have a fade and your hair is low, essentially I think why it is liked is because you really can't see someone's hair texture. But you know, African-Americans have created like a style with it that, you know, black people are always gonna add their own little zhuzh. So they created their own little style with it. So even though it is within the conformities of having a short hair and having a clean haircut, it has a really distinct way that is associated with black culture. To the point where people like Travis Kelsey are doing it and getting the recognition for a historically black hairstyle. In some ways, I would say that men getting fades is equivalent to having a texturally ambiguous haircut. Because when it is so short, like if your hair is so short, you're not able to see your hair texture. I'm not saying you are racially ambiguous, I'm saying it is textually ambiguous, which is also why white people or non-black people are also able to use it as a way to see more Racial, like to see more like dipped into black culture. And it's really interesting because I was like, as I was doing research for this video, I was like looking at photos 
um, from different time periods within African American culture. And I would say, let me know if I'm wrong in the comments, but I would say the first time I saw the fade was around the 80s, you know, and I saw this picture of Tupac and like, I feel like back in the day, fades used to be like on the sides and then you can see the front is still like Tupac's natural hair. Um, like it's not lined up. But as time goes on and on and on, I feel like the fade is also getting more, more clean, more cut, you know, um, to the part, to the point right now where you will see people literally have that white lineup in their hair because it's creating illusion of an even sharper haircut. Seeing someone, seeing that article that was being written, literally giving Travis Kelsey claim, like um, saying that it's a Travis Kelsey haircut. And even when I watched him clear it up and said that it was his barber that did it, I wish he had literally said, this is specifically black culture. This is specifically African-American culture because I've seen more and more people kind of dip into it. And it's like really important to know where it started from. Uh, to keep your hair like completely short is something that I think has been an indoctrination from colonialism. And I am not saying that if you keep your hair short, it is a sign of colonialism. I'm saying that the expectation for men to keep their hair short is a symptom of colonialism. And then, you know, that also simultaneously puts pressure for black women to have longer hair, for black women to have a more palatable hair type. But doing this also makes me realize because I am a full caregiver for my dad. So I am now like taking him to, to his barber shops and like doing all these things. and. I was seeing that like the expectation for black men to get their hair cut, like, okay, the more you have like this crisp look being the desired outcome, the more black men will be going to get their hair cut or the more masked people will be going to get their hair cut. Because there are people who are literally after about a week, they start feeling like, oh, my hair is rough or like they'll only wear a hat. And then when you're like, why are you wearing a hat? They're like, oh, I need to get a lineup. Babes, that's like internalized texturism because why is it that when your hair is not in this uniformed way, like it is genuinely giving you panic and you feel like you can't be shown and be seen? Like that's the same. What's the difference between that and like a woman wearing a bonnet because she doesn't want her hair out when it's not done because of the expectations that happen when your hair isn't done? It's the same thing. I understand that the reason that this puts pressure on black people is literally linked to, um, white supremacy and like the force of colonialism because I'm, I'm also very much so aware that when um, black men don't get lineups like people will make fun of their hairline people will be laughing at it and that's really just due to patriarchy um because patriarchy forces people to assimilate and forces people to have to feel like I have to stick within these gender laws. And so when black men grow out their hair, there's like so much, you know, tension of people being like, you need to get your hair done. Like it's the need to have people stay in line. And then, you know, and like to even expand it to my own community, to the lock community, a lot of people will have freeform locks like I have, and they will literally have like a super sharp fade, which is kind of interesting because it's a stylized way of doing, you know, locks. But also if you, I've seen people who have locks and they get a fade and when they don't have a fade, they're like, I need to get a lineup, I need to get a lineup. It's like, babe, your whole hair is kinky. Like this sharp line kind of reminds me of like lawn culture, you know, mowing of the lawn because even to like tie it in, like the lawn being super manicured was not something that really started to come to American culture until like the 50s and the 60s of like this, you know, super clean lawn and uniformed and how a nice lawn is like a symbolism of like a nice house. You know, it's the same thing with our hair, like that uniformed cut, that straight line is a form of success and cleanliness. And I heard a man say, like when I brought this up on TikTok, someone wrote, well, if I don't get a fade and I let my hair out in an afro, it's going to mat. And so I don't want it to mat. And it's like, well, that's also the same pressures that like women are also feeling with their hair texture. Like the idea that we have to always have hair and like we are clowned and made fun of for not having hair is also what is benefiting men by not having to deal with their own hair texture. A lot of black men do not know how to take care of their hair if it is not cut. And then I feel like, you know, a solution to this is waves because waves and wave culture is a desire to want a looser hair texture so that it can look, you know what I'm saying? Especially too, because when you really deep that you're adding gel, brushing your hair excessively and keeping on something to like force it into shape, that's like not your natural hair texture but it's like a hair texture. It's like the desire of having loose hair that's like considered cute and attractive to a lot of people. From the black woman perspective, it reminds me of when we used to do um, twist outs to change our hair texture. Like when all the hairstyles for 4C was telling people to do a twist out. Obviously it's harder the longer your hair gets, but it's the same like root. Just realizing that like 
you know, in tandem, a lot of the issues that black women have struggled with with their hair, like black men have also gone through the same trends, but the difference is that it's acceptable for black men to keep their hair short. But if a woman was to keep her hair short, it's considered masculine. But um, just kind of deeping that like back in the day, men used to do texturizers and that's changing your hair type. That's like literally trying to change your hair type. And black men used to get perms and cut their hair. You know, I remember these times, like there's been a lot of things, like I'm just seeing that a lot of the trends that women have done to keep their hair, I'm seeing men do. And I wonder if there is really like a correlation between the rise of people needing to have excessive baby hairs and the rise of seeing men have these super sharp, clean white lineups and it being fueled by the same umbrella of texturism. And I'm not saying these styles aren't cute because I, I like fades and I like lace fronts and I can be like, okay, this is cute, this is cute. But I can also still have a critique and realizing that this is probably rooted in something that's anti-black. And like, you know, all of us are partaking in things that's probably rooted in anti-blackness. But I just feel like it's important to kind of be aware of why you do what you do. Even for myself, you know, with like contouring your makeup and feeling like you have to contour your face in a certain way, that's also still rooted in something as well. So I'm not trying to take away or tell people to stop doing it, but just kind of having these conversations because for me, I was really thinking about this stuff and it was blowing my mind because I was remembering when I was a kid and like my mom was always doing my hair. One time she like, I had to go to like a graduation when I was like, I don't know, like maybe like in first grade or something or like some award ceremony and like my dad did my hair and I was just realizing, I was like, oh man, this, he is just playing in my hair. Like he does not know what he's doing. Like he put it up and he didn't like slick anything down. He just put it up and I could just sense how people were treating me because he didn't know how to like slick my edges and he didn't know how to do my hair. And I was like, oh, he doesn't know how to do his own hair. Like I've never seen my dad with long hair. And you know, I feel like when black men do get locks and do explore with their natural hair, these are all things that are like you know, pushing yourself to kind of confront your, your own internalized anti-blackness and confront how we have been treated and made to feel. And also I think, you know, black men having long hair is like also subverting the gender expectation because, you know, people are made to feel like men shouldn't have long hair. So there's all these things going on, but even within all of this, the people who have 4C kinkiest hair are always going to be the ones who face the brunt of the most like hardship within texturism. And it's just interesting when I realize that like there's so much pressure around women not loving themselves and not accepting their hair texture and like why are you wearing a wig? Why are you wearing a weave? Why are you hiding yourself? Like be who you really are. Take care of yourself. Take care of your natural hair. But babe, you also haven't grown out your hair since you are four. Your hair has literally been maintained short your whole life and if you don't have a lineup you start to get anxious. That's rooted in the same uh, avoidance as someone who doesn't want to show their natural hair. And both are uniforms that are expected. Black people are still expected to wear straight hair to be able to get a job in the workforce. There are still like, the Crown Act can only go so far. There are still so many schools and companies that are literally not hiring people simply because their hair grows how it naturally grows. So we are both in this together, but one, one person becomes the face of not loving themselves while the other people get to just slide on through like there's no issue. And if we're gonna talk about texturism and we're gonna talk about anti-blackness, we need to talk about how it really affects people who are also able to benefit from it by just keeping their hair short. Keeping your hair short is literally like the easiest option to not have to confront the internalized texturism that you have. Yeah, let me know what y'all think. Like, if you feel like you've noticed this trend or you've noticed these things being linked to um, texturism and how men interpret it, I would love to hear. Um, if you made it to the end of the video, I was really feeling myself today. Um, I did my makeup which you can see with the yellow and the blue. It's actually inspired by my best friend because she did a makeup look kind of similar to this, my best friend Miley. So I was just trying to like take it and kind of revamp it and go for like, you know, cowries and a bow in my head. And my hair is half up, half down. I'm trying to like explore more with different styles around having my hair like half up, half down. But if you made it to the end, tell me what you like. The skin is skinning. The makeup is makeuping. So yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.